Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about graphing data. So if we get started here, you know, I want to think about a question. Why do we graph data? Uh, why would we do this anyway? When I was in high school, to be honest with you, I don't really think I knew this answer. Um, I knew that any time I did a lab report, like I had to do graphs, um, but I pretty much just knew that science teachers, you know, liked graphs, and so if you wanted a good grade, that's what you needed to do. But that's really not uh, why we graph at all. Um, so think for a minute. I mean, why do we graph data? We graph to find a relationship between two quantities. And in AP Physics, the only reason why you should want to graph data is if you really want to see what the relationship is between two quantities. So as an example to work with today, I have a data chart from um, a lab that could have been done in class here. And you can see the first column here is diameter in centimeters. So we had students measure the diameter of certain round objects in the classroom and then measure the circumference of those same um, round objects and we have put it here in this data chart. Now a couple of ideas about data charts that are important. This first column here is the independent variable so in this case we have diameter and this is the quantity that ends up on the x-axis of your graph this is the quantity that you determine. The second column of your data chart is reserved for the dependent variable and this is what will end up on our x-axis. So now if you take a look at the graph to your right here we were given a grid and I've set up the title. When we think about titles we want the title of your graph in physics to always be y versus x. So in this case, it'll be circumference versus diameter. And you see I've just used the symbols here. One of the things um, that takes me the longest amount of time is scaling the axes. So when I looked at the x-axis, I knew that this is where diameter went. And I have an axis label here that says diameter. And right next to it, in parentheses, is the units with which that physical quantity was, was measured. So in this case, centimeters. Same thing on our y-axis here. Circumference is the physical quantity, and then in parentheses you have centimeters as the unit of measure. When I take a look at diameter, the smallest value is 0 and the largest is 12. When I counted the boxes here on the x-axis, I noticed that there were 12 boxes. Uh, relative to where the zero point was, so I just decided to have each of these boxes count for one centimeter. To do the scale for circumference was a little more challenging. The lowest value is zero, the highest is close to 38. When you look at the graph here, um, you don't have 40 squares or 38 squares, so I needed to think about how I could scale the data. And a good rule of thumb when you're graphing is make sure that your graph, when you think about all of the data points here, takes up at least 75% of that graph. If it doesn't, you can probably come up with a method to scale it better. So I have all of the data points here, and this is what's called a scatter plot. Now I don't want to connect the dots here because I'm really just looking for a trend in the data. We talked about how this information was collected, and so there's some experimental uncertainty when it comes to real measurements here. So I definitely don't want to connect the dots, but I do want a line of best fit between these points that you see here. And when I look at these points, I get the feeling that there this is probably a linear relationship that we have here. And that's pretty exciting in physics if you have a linear relationship. Things are pretty easy. When we have a linear relationship, we know that we would be able to model that graph in the form of y equals mx plus b. And this is something you're probably very familiar with uh, because you've probably dealt with these straight lines over the years. The y is going to be our y quantity m is the slope of the graph and notice that 
we have a straight line. Anytime you have a straight line, your slope is constant. This particular straight line looks that it looks like it has a positive slope. X will be our x quantity, so in this case diameter. And finally, b here is our y intercept. So now that we know that we have a simple linear equation, we can use the graph here to write a specific equation for this data. But there's a few steps that we need to follow. So the first thing that we want to do is define the x and y quantities. So when I think about this graph, I have a y quantity. All right. I have a y quantity that in this case is equal to circumference. And I don't really feel like writing circumference down all of the time, especially if my main goal is to write a math model for this particular relationship. So I would like to assign a variable to circumference, so I'm going to call that capital C. My x value happens to be diameter, and I know in geometry, mostly for diameter, we use a lowercase d, so I'd like to assign a lowercase d to that quantity here. The next step is to define and calculate the slope. I'm going to use the symbol m for slope, but just be aware that um, k can be used for slope as well. Slope is always change in the y divided by change in the x. So in this case, change in the y value means change in the circumference, and change in the x value means change in the diameter. When I look at this um, definition of slope, delta c over delta d, doesn't remind me of another quantity, so I'm just going to leave that as delta c over delta d for now. But now let's calculate the slope. When you calculate the slope, it's important that when you're doing so, you're finding two points on the line of best fit and not just grabbing two data points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for points on the graph that are pretty convenient for me to read. So as an example here, I might take something like this right here. I know that this point is going to be 8 centimeters and the y value looked to be right under the 25 so this is going to be let's say about 8 centimeters 24 centimeters for the xy coordinates now I need any other point on this line and I can choose any point on the line because the slope of this line is constant okay so what if I chose this point here looks to be right about halfway and so now I have four centimeters and for the Y I would call that uh, maybe 12 centimeters so let's calculate this slope then on the top here we have the difference in the Y values so it'll be 24 centimeters minus 12 centimeters all divided by 8 centimeters divided by 4 centimeters this means I end up with 12 centimeters on the top and 4 centimeters on the bottom this is interesting because a centimeter divided by a centimeter is just one so I know that whatever I do get for the slope it's some unit list value so I know that the slope is about 3 with no units okay so now I've calculated my M so what's the next step the next step will be to define the y-intercept and this is pretty easy because all we need to do is look at the y-axis and find out what the value is when X is equal to 0 so when X is equal to 0 here circumference is equal to 0 centimeters so I'm going to say that B B is the symbol for the y-intercept is equal to 0 centimeters the last part of this is to finally write the equation. So I'm going to go right over here to where it says y equals mx plus b. And now what I'd like to do is use all of this information we've collected to write a specific equation for this relationship. Instead of y, I can substitute in circumference c. m, the slope, I've calculated as a constant 3, or about 3. 
the x value is diameter, and b here is just plus 0 centimeters. So if I want to simplify that a bit, I could definitely do that. Um, I could simplify this to just equals c, c equals 3d because the plus 0 centimeters isn't important. And what's interesting about this 3 here is that um, it is about pi, right? Pi is about 3.14. So you do get a slope that's pretty much equal to pi, and that does make sense because before we even got this started, you probably knew that c is equal to pi times d. So does it make sense that the quantity um, that we find, the relationship that we find, is that circumference is equal to about three times the diameter of all of the objects we found? Right, it definitely makes sense. So this is just a small example of some basic graphing principles that we'd like to follow throughout the year. I hope that you found this helpful, and I hope that you have a great day.